evening, everyone. Good morning, everyone. Today I'm going to show you how to convert a JPEG image into a PNG graphic. PNGs allow for transparency, which might be a look that you're going for in um, your magazine cover if you want to have multiple layers um, within your magazine cover. So today I'm going to go with a Wayne Gretzky theme. Um, I have Sports Illustrated in mind for those of you that are doing your journals around hockey and so I'm going to get started I'm going to go to file in Photoshop I'm going to go to file open and I found a really great file of Wayne Gretzky and I'm going to open him up okay and here I have a really great picture of him um, it's a high resolution image so make sure that when you're finding images for your magazine cover you guys are um, sourcing high resolution photos you know how to do that and the next thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to use the quick selection tool and I'm going to go to select subject okay so Photoshop's just analyzing my photo Okay, and it's made its selection. I'm just going to zoom in on it, see if that it's okay. It didn't miss anything. Oh, maybe a little bit of his glove there. Got to add to that. There we go, that looks pretty good. And then now that I've got my subject selected, I'm going to hit Command and J at the same time, Command J, and that puts him on his own separate layer. So if I turn the background layer off, you can see here I'm left with a really great photo of Wayne Gretzky. The gray and white background indicate that it's a transparent graphic. And the last thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to go up to File, Save As, save on your computer and where it says format I'm going to choose PNG so the PNG will allow for transparency so I'm not going to have any sort of background in my photo all I'm going to be left with is just the actual shape of Wayne Gretzky himself okay so the next step is I'm going to open InDesign the icon looks like that in Adobe ID I'm going to open that up and I'm going to go to create new and I'm going to size this document for print. So I'm going to go over to print and I want letter size. You can see here the units of measure in InDesign, it defaults to picas. I'm going to switch that over to inches because that is a measurement that we are familiar with. Portrait orientation and I'm going to click create. Okay, so one of the key benefits of using InDesign is that it too is a vector-based software just like Adobe Illustrator which we looked at last week and the next thing I'm gonna do is I'm going to go and I'm gonna insert my images so I'm gonna go to file place okay and I saved my images to the desktop so I've got my Hockey Hall of Fame graphic and I'm gonna open that one up first and I'm going to place it within my document. I can move it around like so. I'm going to zoom out here. Okay, zoom back in. So I'm just sizing it to fit my eight and a half by eleven document. Now you'll notice you're probably wondering where did half of her drawing go? Well, I can reposition it if I switch over to the direct selection tool. So see how I'm on the direct selection tool? You can now see this brown box and I need to resize that in order to be able to include the whole image there. And there's been some funky distortion happening so I might just keep that sort of without the, there, center that more like that. Okay, so that's one of the key things and one of the main questions that students always ask me is where did my image go? Note the difference between the selection tool and the direct selection tool. 
Okay, the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to go and I'm going to grab my image of Wayne Gretzky. I'm going to go to File, Place, and here is my PNG graphic of Wayne Gretzky. And I'm going to put him in here as well. Okay, and I'm going to have to move him around and resize him. Actually, I'm just going to switch back over to my direct selection tool here. File, place. There we go, and I'm going to move him. We'll zoom out. See, the picture insert's quite large, so I need to resize him. And now I'm going to switch over to my direct selection tool. As you can see, it too needs to be resized. Zoom in. We want to make sure we're using really high quality graphics on our magazine cover. And I'm just trying to get him located strategically so that he fits nicely on my cover. Like so. Okay, so that's how you get PNG graphics into your InDesign programs.